Welcome to Live on Purpose Radio with Dr. Paul Jenkins, where you will hear inspiring stories of ordinary people doing extraordinary things. Feed your mind with a regular dose of positive energy and show up for your life every day on purpose. Living on purpose means that you have a purpose and you do it intentionally. And now, here's your host, Dr. Paul. Hello, everybody. Welcome back to Live on Purpose Radio. This is Dr. Paul. We're promoting pathological positivity today here at Live on Purpose Radio. I have a friend in the office with me today who has agreed very graciously to come and join me at Live on Purpose Radio today. Her name is Diane Thomas. Welcome, Diane. Thank you. It's great to be here. Thrilled to have you with me. Oh, my pleasure. I've been looking forward to our conversation. Thank you. And we've been planning it for a little while. Yeah, we have. Diane and I share a club. I guess we could call it that. It's the National yes. Speakers Association. You and I are both members right. of the Mountain West, Con- uh, Mountain West Conference. Look, I'm thinking sports now. Yeah, that's okay. <laughs> <laughs> the Mountain West Chapter yes. of the National Speakers Association. Diane, you've been at it a little longer than I have. Oh, so long. <laughs> For quite a while. I have. And we were talking just before the show that you've done a lot of media appearances yeah. um, for your entire career, some yeah. four or 5,000 of these. Yeah, it turned into my career. So I really went here to BYU, uh, uh-huh. here in Provo, Utah, and graduated with a bachelor's and a master's degree. Mm-hmm. And uh, my dad was a forest stranger. I grew up in the mountains of uh, southern Utah. In southern Utah, that's right. And then we moved to Salt Lake when I was 12. Mm-hmm. And, uh, you know... Poor forest rangers, they don't have a lot of money to go stay in cabins. Right. So we stayed in tents and learned outdoor camping and cooking. Oh, well, perfect. I started right here in Orm. I taught my students how to do outdoor camping and cooking in my home ec classes. Now, this was my first introduction to you. And I remember years ago watching a TV program with my mom where you were featured. You were a guest or something. Yeah. I can't even remember the, yeah. the context of it, but it was... It was all about this roughing it easy idea. And that's what sticks in my mind about what Diane Thomas is all about. Yes. Because that was my first introduction to well, you. So, so you teach people creative ways to, to do interesting things. Well, I grew up in a family that were really, you would classify them pioneers. My uh-huh. father lived in Heber, grew up. They always had to have a garden. My mother lived in Colville. Well, I grew up in Heber. Did you know that? I did not know that. Well, there you go. I'm a Clyde Cummings and Another Thomas connection. and all of those. There you yeah. go. Yeah. But as you know, in the early days, they, they had to create things. And so I grew sure. up in a home where it was pretty creative. And, and we lived in Monticello in the Four Stranger house mm-hmm. about a mile out of town. And I saw my dad, if he packed a horse, he, there was no pattern for it. Mm-hmm. You figure it out. And so I grew up in that kind of a home. And so that helped. I believe mm-hmm. everybody's creative. Everyone. Yeah. But we turn it off as we get into school and do this and don't do that and stuff. And I, and I did not. Mm. I didn't do that. I, I had a hard time in school reading, first of all. And so every day I had to figure out how I was going to get through school. So mm-hmm. it kept those creative juices going. Right. And I think that opened up a career for me, ultimately. Well, it sure did. So and you have authored I have 19, several books. 19, 19. books. Yeah. Wow. So, and it started with Roughing It Easy? Roughing It Easy was the first one. And I mm-hmm. actually taught here at Orem Junior High School. And my home ec students, yeah, I was closing economics. a camp down and I couldn't, didn't have time to prepare. Mm-hmm. So the only thing I could teach my home ec kids, my food classes, mm-hmm. was outdoor camping and cooking. So I said, you mm-hmm. know, kids, just bring a tuna fish can tomorrow and we'll make a buddy, buddy burner in it. Mm-hmm. Put wax in it. And I put it underneath a can that I got from the lunchroom ladies. And all the kids were cooking out on the patio, and my oh. principal loved it. And yeah. so that was the beginning, That's and I did that every year. And there. pretty soon, mm-hmm. when I came back here, they said, why don't you write it up for your thesis? And that mm-hmm. was my master's thesis. And then the year later, I found myself on the Johnny Carson show, cooking right. eggs and bacon. And maybe that's the one you watched, cooking eggs and bacon in a paper bag. And it opened a whole career. I ended up on mm-hmm. the Today Show for eight years. Eight years on the Today Show. Yeah, I was there about mm-hmm. every other week, and then... After that was ABC with the home show in Los Angeles, and it was mm-hmm. as big as, almost as big a show as the Today Show. Right. And it went on for six years, so I was on that show for six years. So you've got a website where people can go 
find some of these yes. archives, yeah. right? Yes, absolutely. And it's dianthomas.com. Yeah, but you have to spell it right. No E at the end of Diane. No E, so D-I-A-N. T-H-O-M-A-S. T-H-O-M-A-S. Yeah. And actually, if you want to the one with the E, it's my new website. It's not quite up to date. We've not launched it yet, but either one uh, of them will get you there. It'll get you there, too. But do the one without an E. So I, if, if, if any of you listeners want to know how to cook eggs and bacon in a paper bag or a cake in a cardboard box or any of these fun things yeah, that you've shared yeah. through that Roughing It Easy tradition... Yeah. It's all there. It's all available. Your books are available there. Oh, yeah. And there's over 125 articles there. Mm-hmm. You can get a lot of information for free. So yeah. that's all really fun. Yeah. And there's something else I wanted to talk to you about today as well. Yes. Because we could probably spend hours on all of that stuff. You, you are very practical. You're very creative. You've applied that practical creativity to a new life issue. Yeah, was one a, that you have personally experienced, was, and it led to your latest yeah. book. Could you talk about that a little bit? It was a Just huge it. challenge. You have to understand. I I literally turned into a media career. My career did, mm-hmm. and uh, before I knew it, I was on the road sometimes three hundred days a year. That's wow. fifty days at home. So that's like one day mm-hmm. average a week. So I'd. This leave. was with speaking media. Appearances. I was all over the country. I would do TV shows. Mm-hmm. I actually traveled six years with Brigham Young University from April to August. Mm-hmm. And I would go out and mm-hmm. do education weeks. So we'd do three days in one place and go to the next one for three days. And mm-hmm. so I would lecture from 2 to 5 in the afternoon. But in the morning, mm-hmm. I was up at 5.30 on the television shows, the newspaper, right. radio interviews. Right. And, and uh, you know, over the years, and there was a lot of pressure. You'll understand because yeah, you were a sure. therapist. Uh-huh. The stress of it. And also coming out of a real small town, that's a Big step to go from there to New York on the Today Show. Right. Because I really was born in the woods, basically. Mm -hmm. And so um, I didn't have a lot of self-confidence. I think food took a place for me. You know, Mm. I think eating Mm. was kind of what made me feel good. Yeah, that's so common. pretty soon you start putting a pound on, a pound, pound, pound. I ended up at 300, and uh, I have a Weight Watchers at 326 pounds. 326 pounds. I have a poster here in front of me. So that has a picture of somebody I hardly even recognize. Yeah. 326. 326. That, uh, that's so. not your ideal target weight? Well, no, no, no. And <laughs> I would fluctuate between 300 and 326, but my wow. parents weren't well, so I went home and took care of them. That's another stress. So stress is a mm-hmm. huge... Stress can be a big factor for people putting on weight. It sure and is. And so I had to learn to manage that and cut it down. And, and even now, when I get too stressed... You know, I've actually done really you good notice. this week. I, I, I've done better this week than I usually do. But mm-hmm. um, I've, I'm have i leaving for China on Tuesday. Right. And so I'm trying to get a new product out and all of those things. And mm-hmm. so you add a lot of... You, I created it, though. So I have to be careful of that. And uh, I have to be really careful in eating my food. And what mm-hmm. I mentioned to you before is I created a system. And mm-hmm. I think that's what we have to do. If we're going to be healthy... Mm-hmm. And basically what happened is... I was only heavy for about 15 years, but towards the end of it, my knee was so bad. Well, you said only 15 15 years. years, Yeah, That's a big old chunk of life, isn't it? It is a big chunk of life. To haul around over 100 pounds, you think about that. Can I comment about something else, too? Because you're going to share with our listeners something about how you got out of this and and what you got out of it. Um. The thing that I wanted to acknowledge, though, is the power of discontent. The power of discontent when something just isn't the way you want it to be in your life. What if this is your health? What if it's your relationship? What if it's your finances? It doesn't matter what area it is, but if it's not where where you would like it to be, it creates discontent. Yeah. Pain. Yeah. And you were feeling that, weren't you? Oh. Well, the, the, the ultimate came uh, when I went to New York with a friend. I worked for Kraft Foods. I was a spokesperson for mm-hmm. and traveled with Kraft, and I was a spokesperson for Duncan Hines and mm-hmm. Ocean Spray. So I'd travel. I, I meant literally, I live on the road for 25 years. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And a friend of mine, we decided we'd go to New York to spend the Christmas holidays. This was in two, 2003. 
Okay. So we go to New York. Mm-hmm. I have a place back there because I'd had apartments back there. And I knew a lot of people because I lived in New York for a while. Mm-hmm. Or I'd go back and forth. And um, my knee was so bad I couldn't walk. And New York is a town that you need to walk in because, you know, you got to find a cab yeah, or whatever. So sure. we ended up cabbing it. And when I got home, I, I remember weighing 320 pounds. So I had a lot of time mm-hmm. between. I had a, a discontent of two weeks mm-hmm. of pain, major pain. Mm-hmm. With my knee, and it would look like surgery or whatever, and and so when I landed in Salt Lake, I said, "I'm done. It is over. I will not live this life." That was enough. That was it. And so I think we have to hit a bottom where we yeah. say, "I'm done." Some kind of a threshold to where it, yeah. it actually moves you to action. Right. And you know, I have to say, there's lots of angels in in the world, and I met mm. one four months before this happened. It was a lady who was listening to my presentation in Los Angeles, mm-hmm. and she came up after and said, I could help you lose weight. Oh, really? And I'm from Salt Lake, and I go, oh, a multi-level lady that wants me in her downline <laughs> to uh-huh. sell herbs. Yeah, of and course. And she said, no, no, I could help you lose weight. She gave me her card. I kept, Fortunately, I kept her card, and I did contact her, but I didn't quite move on it until Christmas. Mm-hmm. When I got home, I thought, you know, who could help me? Because, you know, weight's a tough one. Because we do it for emotion, for stress, for whatever. And it's not like you can go off of food. You cannot go off of food, you and you've got to learn eating. how to manage it. And yeah. so I called Jackie, and I said, I'm ready to go to work. And, and I thought to myself, I will do whatever I have to do to change my life. Because as a kid, I loved life, and I loved riding mm-hmm. my bike, and I loved all of that stuff. Yeah. And I did not want to spend the, the you know, I'm... I'm over 60, so I don't want to spend the rest of my life, you know, in pain and sickness. I yeah. did not. I, so I, I can make a choice. That's right. You know, Dr. Paul, that's one of the things that most of us can do with most of the problems mm-hmm. we have. We can choose can make a choice. to do different. Exactly. And so when I got off that airplane, I made my choice. And not that I stayed off completely, but I went home, called Jackie, and we started, and actually, mm-hmm. she's become a very dear friend, and I still talk to her usually once a week, and you know she's been supportive. But I would say find somebody that can help you or support you in whatever change you need to make, because we've it's yes. like a rut in the road. Mm-hmm. We keep running our car down that same rut, and pretty soon the rut gets pretty deep, and it takes mm-hmm. quite a bit to get out of the rut, to get that tire up out of the rut and stay out of the rut. I have one of my one of my recent guests commented about ruts. Yeah. He said the only dif- difference between a rut and a grave is distance and depth. Yeah, yeah. And and we get stuck in those things. And exactly. Just, wow. So the discontent gets to a point where you think this is enough. Yeah. It's time to change, and then you make that choice. And that's what I did when I came back from. I just said, there is Perfect. a choice in this. And I might tell you before, my mother had passed away, my dad had passed away, and I had help, been involved in helping take care of them in the end. I even took my mother's walker home so I could go from the bedroom to the bathroom at night. For yourself. For myself. And I even took it a couple of times because I just didn't know if I could walk on my knee because mm-hmm. there was so much pain. So I had a lot of things going on, and I, I almost was to the point saying, maybe I need a cane. Mm. I mean, I was like 60 at that mm-hmm. point. Mm-hmm. And so I was really happy, though, when I finally said, I'm, I'll do whatever it takes. And I think that's what you have to do is say, I'll do whatever it takes. So mm-hmm. I listened to Jack. He said, okay, the first thing you got to do is find an exercise. And I thought, what did I love to do? I think this is a big one. And it has to be something you love, huh? Well, I just knew that if I didn't stick with it, I wouldn't have the results. That's right. Because you can see people every day. Mm-hmm. who have lost weight and gained it back, who've lost weight and gained it back. Happens all the time. I mean, more, it probably happens 95% of the time when people lose weight. There's only about mm-hmm. five, less than 5% of the people who keep it off. Because you've got to do the same thing you did to lose it to keep it off. That's right. And that's, watch what you eat. So you really have to change your lifestyle. So mm-hmm. I said, okay, what can I do? And my friend called me up and she says, Diane, there's some bikes for sale at Nordic Track. So I went down there and I thought, well, I'd get an op- an incumbent bike and watch Oprah. I uh-huh. walked in there and there were six beautiful. They weren't Swin. My bike when I was a kid was a Swin. 
mm-hmm. but six bikes there, and they were three hundred dollar bikes for a hundred dollars. I walked up mm-hmm. the counter and I said, I, "I'll take two because uh-huh. I was going to do this. If one had a flat, I'd have another one to ride. There were oh, no there excuses, you go. so I took two bikes. <laughs> you you home. bought a spare. I bought a spare. I took two <laughs> bikes home and I started riding my bike and." I would ride sometimes two hours a day. And sometimes mm-hmm. I would be so exhausted. I'd go home and spend part of the day in bed. Cause I, would, I mean, you think of moving 326 pounds around. That's a lot of work. It's a lot of work. Wow. Anyway, so um, I kept riding and riding and riding. And you know what? I, I have to honestly say, in our challenges, there are blessings. Because Absolutely. I rode my bike so much, and I told people about it. It was my new passion. Mm-hmm. And uh, this guy heard me talk about it, and he was at uh, Morris Murdoch in Salt Lake. And the guy said, I want somebody to take trips to China and he's on bikes. He said, go get Diane uh-huh. Thomas, you know. And mm-hmm. so they called mm-hmm. me up. I was in California. and said, will you take a bike trip to China? Oh, wow. And so the ultimate was, and we can tell when I come back, I started taking people to China. Beautiful. We got to learn about this system too. We've got a lot we'll to cover. Do this we'll be right back. Living in a nice big house with a sunny little pool, and I'll be cool. I'll always have a gig, cause I'll be big. I'll have parties and friends and places to go. Thank you for joining me for the Live on Purpose Radio podcast. It is truly an honor to be a part of your prosperity team. Please visit the website. DrPaul.org, where you will be able to sign up for Empower, a quick, inspiring message that will be sent right to your inbox several times a month. Click on the blog link to share your comments and be part of the discussion. You can also pick up powerful information products and stay in touch with upcoming events, all to assist you in creating and living a life that you love. Share Live on Purpose Radio with someone in your life today, and thanks for listening. This is Kirk Weasler to tell you about morebetterbooks.com. Morebetterbooks.com is where you can find more better books for a more better life. Not only that, let me tell you about some of the very fun and cool select titles on morebetterbooks.com. You'll want to get a copy of The Dog Poop Initiative. This best smelling book could change your life forever. It certainly changed the lives of thousands of Boeing employees as well as school teachers, parents, leaders across the United States and in Israel and in Germany. And you can get your own copy at morebetterbooks.com. Whoa, that's not all. What about The Cookie Thief? This classic tale told in a rhyming format, fully illustrated with very fun hit messages. Pick up a copy now today on morebetterbooks.com. Other great titles there, Finding Your Pathway to Mastery, Beyond Illusions, Make It Great, These titles are only available on morebetterbooks.com. Go to morebetterbooks.com today and begin to have a more better life and live that life on purpose. To be what we are and to become what we are capable of becoming is the only end of life. Robert Louis Stevenson So, Diane, I was telling you during the break that I think one of your unique mm-hmm. gifts and one of your skills, one, one of the things you uniquely contribute to this world is your practical creativity. Yeah. You took an approach to weight loss that probably rivals everything that you can do out camping <laughs> and cooking well, bacon in a paper bag yeah. kind of thing. Would you share with us... Once you got to this point of discontent and you realized it's time to change something, you made that choice, you enrolled people into your life who were qualified to assist you with that, yeah. and then you launched on a very practical approach to taking this down, and I think that it would benefit some of our listeners to hear what that was. Yeah. Tell us about One it. One thing I have to tell you is it didn't come off overnight. It took and me, no. to be honest with you, I mean, I was, I still would like to lose some, probably another 10 to 20 pounds, but, mm-hmm. but it's a process. Sure. And so you change, it's like, you cannot turn that ship around overnight. And most mm-hmm. people want 
Give me the diet. I want it off tomorrow. And it's not, I mean, you think about losing 115 pounds. Your mm-hmm. bones are different. Your everything is different. And so you have to do it slowly. And so I didn't want to. I mean, so many people starve or don't eat this or don't eat that. Mm -hmm. And I knew I had to eat real food. So I will tell you, first of all, I knew I had to eat good food. And so Mm -hmm. if you when you go in the store, one of the best things you can do for yourself is buy stuff on the side walls or on the back wall. That's where the vegetables are. It's where the meats are, you know, and Mm -hmm. dairy's good. Okay. Um, and so that's what I started doing. And But then the next challenge I had with food was portion sizes. Mm-hmm. If you're overweight, you do not understand portion sizes. Mm. So for example, if you take uh, grape nuts, mm-hmm. the cereal, mm-hmm. a half a cup is your portion size. That's hardly any. Yeah. I'll bet you I had three times that whenever I had grape nuts. Mm-hmm. You know, and uh, shredded wheat, one cup is. So if you want to know the portion size, look on the package. And so I started, mm. and also I think another challenge for me was I live a pretty busy busy life. Mm-hmm. And so I figured the setup is going to be the key. The and system. S- the system and the setup, you know, setting it up. So that, Oh, yeah, yeah. yeah. So system-wise, uh, and this took me... A long time. I spent a lot of Saturdays, weekends on this one. How to set my refrigerator up, because that supports how I eat. So, folks, we're looking at a picture right now of Diane's fridge. Yes, and so at the top <laughs> it's of it is I have yogurt, and I just got these one-cup containers. They're little rectangular containers. You can buy them in the stores. Mm-hmm. They're just the plastic containers. And so what I would do is if I had cottage cheese, it's a half a cup. It's a half a cup, not a cup. It's a half a cup. So you portioned it out. So I would, I would line up my little containers, and I'd measure six half cups, put it in there, put the lid on, and put it in the refrigerator. So when I went to get cottage cheese, it was portioned out. And you already knew how much to eat. Exactly. And so if, like if I cooked butternut squash, and I had leftovers, butternut squash portion is one cup. So I portioned out in a cup. So I just take that out, and I eat it. So And then um, the other thing is I, I eat... I call it the five S's. Soups, salads, sandwiches, stir fry, and steak. Now, steak can be any piece of meat that's three yeah, ounces. Protein meat. It could be mm-hmm. chicken or whatever. And if you don't, if there's people who don't eat meat, that's okay. You've got to learn how to get protein, though. So you've got to combine your food. So, mm-hmm. But I'm going to talk as if you're, you can have meat. Mm-hmm. So, uh, soup, sandwich, salad, stir fry. What, what's common in all of those? The S. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the S, you're good. There's vegetables. Lots of vegetables. You can yeah. eat as much celery as you want. You can eat as much cabbage as you want. You can eat as much mushrooms. So, this is how Most, you get to that full feeling. Yes. And not only, okay, vegetables have fiber and fruits have fiber. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I don't eat as many fruits because they have a little more sugar in them. But I'll mm-hmm. eat up to three or four fruits a day. Mm-hmm. And then, again, you have to keep them in the portion size. Right. I don't worry about the portions on vegetables much. I'll eat a whole, you know, because vegetables... You just down the whole garden. Yeah, can down the garden. But they have fiber in them. And the fiber helps move your system, helps all of the food digest right. and move through. So by doing the five S's, you're getting lots of vegetables. So in the next couple of shelves, I take the large rectangular containers... And I hate the lids because they they come in different sizes. Mm. And I said, enough of that. We'll get rid of the lids. But mm-hmm. you need a, a cover, so I use uh, shower caps. Oh yeah, for my lids. And well, that, they have products like that now too. You can do it. You've got a little, little elastic. Yeah, they do have products like that. But I, I in a uh, saran wrap kind of thing. You know, I travel mm-hmm. enough that I just collect my shower caps. But if you don't, I go to the dollar store and you can get eight shower caps for a dollar. Of course, you're going to use something like shower caps yes, in your exactly. fridge, Diane. Why, exactly. Why would I be surprised? so? The other thing that's good is <laughs> I have an island in the middle, and I just go. And I go. Oh, last last night I said I'm going to make a vegetable dish along with my. I have. I had meat. I had just a little steak. Uh So I pulled out three or four vegetables and made a stir fry and had a steak. Mm -hmm. Every meal I cook does not take more than fifteen minutes. Mm -hmm. So I because it's set up. So I walk in now. If I'm going to do a hamburger, this is my favorite. I don't. 
and that is if I'm going to cook a hamburger, I go in, I'll brown one side of it, I turn mm-hmm. it over, and then I spice it up, turn the heat off, put the lid on, and I go work for another five or ten minutes, and when I come in, it's all done. Mm-hmm. From the heat that was in the unit that mm-hmm. was burning. Now right. I have an electric stove. I don't a gas stove will turn it off, and it would. Uh, but there's heat in the pan. The heat. Yeah. So if you get a, a pan, if you want to do it on a gas stove, get a heavy pan. Get a yeah, cast, like iron cast iron pan. Once it's heat, you brown one side, turn it over, season it. And it's done. So I have a lot of things like that. I'll go in and do that, and that's it. Mm-hmm. Or I'll go in and put. And I've learned too, though. I have to put a timer because sometimes I get involved in something else. You get distracted. So I try to do a timer if I have to. But mm-hmm. on the in my freezer, what I do is I will portion, and I have a scale that I got, and it will zero things out. I meant so I can put a bowl on top of there and then push zero. Oh yeah, yeah. And so that will, whatever you're putting in now, you've got the actual. That's right. Weight so I can have a salad. But I don't want to put cheese in there, but I can tell, I can promise you, I do not know what a serving of cheese is when I go from the container. So mm-hmm. I'll look on the package. I know. So last night I had 25 grams. And mm. I, so I put the salad on, zeroed it out, and I put the cheese on it for 25 grams, which is 100 calories. I can't have more than that because it's too much mm-hmm. calories. And then I have the nice cheese. I know what it is. And I know because I've been just adding for a few weeks and... I've done better this week because I'm a little more careful because I'm weighing it. So Mm -hmm. I still have to do some of these things, but I don't mind it because I've got them figured out. Another one is I buy um, Ziploc bags, and the the least expensive one is a sandwich bag, and I use those for everything. Mm -hmm. And I figure I don't have to be green with those plastic bags because they help me lose weight and keep the weight off. But like grape nuts, I'll often measure those half a cup. Shredded wheat, and then I'll make a box up that has 20 of them. So if I want breakfast, I go in and grab the shredded wheat. So your box of cereal isn't just a box of cereal. It's a box of baggies. It's a box of baggies, yeah. Yeah, okay. Now, if I don't do that, then I usually have too much. Now, you could go back and weigh that, you know, just put your bowl on top, zero it out, and then see what the grams are. And, and I'm hearing through all of this, Diane, you're trying to make this easy for yourself. Absolutely. To continue to do. That's right. And that's where a lot of us fall down on these goals. Is that true? Exactly. And I work at it. I work at it. What's the system? Like, okay, I have to have eight cups of water. How do I know eight cups of water through the day? Mm-hmm. So at home, I have an imaginary f- square. It has four, four positions right by my sink. And I take a pint mm. jar, I fill it full of water. When I get up in the morning, I have that. I fill the pint jar back up and put it in position two. So if I walk oh, in, so I go, oh, I've already had two you... cups. Mm-hmm. And then it's in position two. Okay? When I've drank, and then I try to have that by 11 o'clock. I go and drink another, and then it's in position three, position four. And if mm-hmm. I drink more than that, it's out of the position. I mean, it's a no-brainer. I know exactly. How much water? Now, I see you have a container of water here. So mm-hmm. you could count that, mm-hmm. but you just know, well, I only have to drink two then, and I have to drink that. So mm-hmm. you build a system. And also, I knew I was going to be gone all day. So I went out, got my container that I drink in the car, and I filled it full of water so I'd make sure I have water. And I usually have, mm-hmm. in my car, I have a little cooler, and it has a uh, pineapple, so I can a can of pineapple. It has mm-hmm. nice forks, plastic nice fork spoons has a can of a tuna fish. I don't I used to go to the McDonald's and buy the dollar hamburgers and I remember one day having three of them, cheeseburgers. Mm-hmm. I had over a thousand calories in boom. Just, just like right that. there. But now last night the other day I was at uh, the Apple store because I go over there to learn how to do my Apple all the time mm-hmm. or my my computer and oh I was just I'd been pressed and stressed and all of it. Mm-hmm. I went out to my car Open up the pineapple. I ate the pineapple. Picked me back up, or I'll take a snack with me. Mm-hmm. So I use the mm-hmm. Ziploc bags, the little sandwich bags, and I'll, uh, I have three snacks a day. So uh, one of my snacks is ten almonds and two tablespoons of dried fruit. Mm-hmm. So I'll make up. I've even made up a hundred. When I go to China on Tuesday, I will have ninety snacks with me in one one two cases, just my. Snacks and food. Mm-hmm. Because over there, I'm not going to be able to get snacks. So I prepare. So it's not hard to think ahead once you get into the programming of thinking ahead. 
And a little thinking ahead saves you a lot of thinking on your feet oh. and, and sets you up for success. Now, remember, when I think ahead, this morning I knew that I was going to be gone, so mm-hmm. I fixed two meals for me. If I had to go find those meals and sit down at a restaurant, it would have taken me more than 15 minutes that I took. That's true, so too. It, so people say, I don't have time. What do you mean? You just haven't figured You're it out. You're using it differently. That's right. So I'm using it to choose a better, make a better choice. Have you noticed, Diane, that everybody has 24 hours a day? Yeah, I do. Yeah, <laughs> but I wish I had 25 sometimes. But it's how we use it. And, and yeah, also, exactly. Let me just say this did not happen overnight. You know, I still work on this, but I love. Don't you like my water one? Mm-hmm. Since I, my office is at home, so I just go out and I can tell exactly when I've drank my water. Mm-hmm. And so, you know, our bodies are are like our cars. We have to have a checkup. That's when mm-hmm. we go to the doctor. We have to fuel it. But our, our bodies, mm-hmm. are you have to fuel a lot more than you do your car. Do you want to put in crap into it? Or are mm-hmm. you going to put in good fuel? Get some premium. Get some premium mm-hmm. in there. And, you know, as a kid told me at the BYU bookstore today when I was there autographing my books, well, up until I'm 25, I got extra energy. I said, yeah, but you know what? How you treat your body up till then will depend. I said... I overbuse mine, so now I have a challenged knee. Mm-hmm. I'll never get that back. And sure, I could have mm-hmm. an operation, but often that never works as good mm-hmm. as the one that you had originally. And it's going much better for you now. Oh, I listen, I've, I said to my doctor the last time, how long have we been messing this knee? He said 19 years. I would have had a new knee a long ago if I hadn't have done this. If you hadn't got serious yeah. about setting yourself up to succeed here. Yeah. And, and, and following through. Exactly. Let's see if we missed anything. Uh, we told about soup, salad, sandwiches, and stir fries. Stir fries are fun because you can get a lot mm-hmm. of vegetables. Also, learning to cook. And it's, and, and yeah. st- people will say to me, but I don't cook and I don't know how. I, well, stop, stop. Wait, I've just got butternut squash in here and i got water underneath it and I turned it on. Mm-hmm. And so I steam a lot of stuff. Mm-hmm. I watch how much oil I take. And mm-hmm. so again, I set my house up as a system so if we do this in every part of our life, we will be okay, and we will have a healthy body. And uh, nowadays, you know, there's lots of things that happen to us. So, Diana, I'm pretty sure as we come up on, on the last little part of our, our talk today, people are going to be thinking, oh, how can I remember all of that stuff that Diane shared? And those oh, are great right. ideas. And, yeah. And they are great ideas. Thank you. I want to point them to a way that they can remember some of what we've talked about today because you've written all of this up in your yes. latest book, yes, which is called Tipping the Scales in Your Favor. Yes. Tipping the Scales in Your Favor. And folks, this is where Diane has shared. And if you've seen any of her books before, they are very practical. It's, it's not fluffy philosophy. You can pick this thing up and use it as a manual for success yeah. and that's your intention in writing exactly. it this way well as you said that's my gift you know mm-hmm. what I mean is ideas just come so if I have a problem I go how can you solve that like I love my water yeah. one I lo- that's helped me I know mm-hmm. I get that much water now and then mm-hmm. I worked on my refrigerator I must have worked on it for two years until I came up with this system with your system that's working and so basically I'll go shopping on Saturday and set, it probably takes me two or three hours but I'm again. Mm-hmm. I'm set up for the week. I can right. have fifteen. You're going to spend meals, that two or three hours somewhere, or more. And I can tell people, mm-hmm. you, let me set my fridge up. I can cook a meal faster, eat it. Then you can go down to the fast food place, order it, go and buy it, mm-hmm. or buy it, sit it in your car and eat it, and come home. I will be finished and cleaned up. Mm-hmm. Because and of be the healthy. preparation, because exactly. of the setup. And when you start feeding your food, your body good food, pretty mm-hmm. soon that's what you crave. Mm-hmm. So, one of my I, we have I know we're close to the end. I have to share with you. I uh-huh. used to go down and eat a malt all the time. I'm sure that put twenty pounds on. Mm. And so I go, I want I want my malt. And uh-huh. so I start. I learned how to cook bananas. I take bananas. I wait till they get really spotted, and that means they have a lot of sugar. I cut them up, freeze them, and then I put a banana into soy milk. And that's my shake every There's single night. And you it, get your sweet. It's just as good. It's sweet and it's delicious. You say just as good, but so it's better. It's better. So, so a thousand calories or 200. And <laughs> I go for 200. And now I have a new life that's and a new body. 
Fantastic. And you've created some new hope for our listeners today. Thank you so much for being here. Thank you.